on the show every time he caused controversy. And you promised you'd say it on the show as opposed to putting it on your Facebook. Cortland Sykes wants to be your next United States Congressman. Good morning, Cortland. How are you, sir? Thanks, McGraw, and it's uh, Senator. We'll be, I'm running against uh, Claire uh, McCaskill. I apologize. What did I say? And that doesn't matter what I said. I was wrong. Senator, yeah, I apologize. Um, <laughs> so uh, what uh, did this, this did this controversy come out of? Were you planning to do this, or did this sort of come out of nowhere? <laughs> what happened here? No, you know, it, it did come out of nowhere. So in 2017, um, I responded to a question uh, about women's rights, and it was a it was, it was a bit of a pushy question, and I pushed back. I'm uh, I'm a bit brash, as, as you know. So, um, you know, when, when the question was asked, do you support women's rights? You know, my first thought was, well, I support rights. So there's no difference between men's rights and women's rights. We don't have laws that restrict men or women. So I thought it was kind of a silly question. And I, I pushed back with a with a, with my comment. And it uh, included uh, a statement that said, you know, you know, Chanel, my fiance. Um, uh, asked that I do, but with that, I expect, you know, dinner at uh, 6 o'clock fixed by her. It's basically, you know, I'm saying that I want to uh, uphold those family uh, traditional values, and, and uh, so does she. Um, there are expectations I have of her, and there are certainly expectations she has of me, and I think that's healthy in a, in a relationship. Sure. But I, think the, but, but I think the key issue here is, you know, this is how Chanel and I want to live our lives. We want to uphold this this traditional family, um, these values. And what you're seeing from the left, and if you go on my, my any of my social media, you'll see, um, you know, they absolutely want to reach in and tell everybody how they should live their lives, you know, how, what, what they should respect and what they should believe. And, you know, this is just nonsense. And that's certainly a valid point in which... Um, you know, you and your wife or your fiance, your wife choose mm -hmm. to right, and that's that's part of the women's live, right? A woman wants to choose to live that way. That's certainly a valid point of view. But when right. you call them snake-filled, you know, heads and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I mean, you're looking to cause controversy. Look, well, look, there has been a war on men in this country for years. These, well, I'm talking about the radical feminists, and this is what we're pushing back on. This is what I'm talking about here. Um, you know, not all feminism is bad, obviously. You take a look. I think the best model of fem, uh, feminism today is Kellyanne Conway, for example. Here's a woman who has kids. She fixes them breakfast before work, and she goes to work, and she's she's very successful. Um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, uh, same thing. And uh, Ivanka Trump, she's a great model for, for women. That, to me, is the perfect reflection of feminism today. But what we're seeing is we see these radical feminists, and I'm not telling them how to live their lives. If they want to shave their heads and wear tin nose rings, go for it. But don't tell me how to live mine. And that's basically what I'm saying. What about Claire McCaskill? What about Claire McCaskill? Do, do, I mean, you mentioned Kellyanne Conway, Republican. You mentioned Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Republican. Uh, they have a life in politics. They have a busy, mm -hmm. busy schedule. They right. The, what doesn't Claire McCaskill also? fit into that schedule as somebody who was of course right so absolutely you, but my but my feelings of claire mccaskill are much different uh of course yeah but, yeah, but I, i'm Conway. not talking i'm not talking about her philosophy on on tax cuts i'm talking about i'm she, not talking about tax cuts no no, no but i mean but i mean what's what's the difference between the feminism of kellyanne conway going out right. into the world and conquering and, and being a leader and all those other things and raising a family and Claire McCaskill going out into the world, making her claims, making her comments known, and then raising a family. Right. It's the, it's the entire approach. You take uh, Claire McCaskill, for example, and I don't know if you've had a chance to read her book, uh, Plenty Ladylike, but I, I encourage you, I encourage everybody to read it. You can't get past the fourth page without her laying out exactly what, she, what she's done. And, uh, you know, I, I'm going to paraphrase it. I encourage everybody to go read it because it's actually much worse than I'll describe, but the way she's gotten to where she is today is by manipulating people into voting for her, right? So in high school, for example, she was kicked out of the cheerleading squad. And, you know, typically what happens is the captain of the football team, his, his girlfriend is picked for homecoming queen. The football team picks the homecoming queen. So she goes out and she spends months, you know, doing special favors for the third string and second string football players and their friends, all with an agenda you know, to get herself elected homecoming queen, and it worked. It, it's, it's absolutely – so when you ask me the difference between Kellyanne Conway 
and Claire McCaskill. There are some deep character flaws in Claire McCaskill that, you know, we're going to be addressing. Believe me, we have plenty of ammunition using your tax dollars to play for her private plane to go on campaign trails. I don't see Kellyanne Conway doing that. Right, that, that, but that wasn't the point. The point was that you were saying that they chose to not be home at 6 o'clock for dinner, mm-hmm. right? And, and my point is Claire McCaskill also didn't choose to be home to have dinner at 6 o'clock for her husband. So in, those, okay. it, that, in that sense, they're very similar. Well, yeah, there's, uh, they also breathe air. Like, well, no, 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 come on, come on, Corlin, come on, Corlin. No, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 don't understand, I don't understand the difference between the feminism of Kellyanne Conway, okay. right, being, the, right, being the, the wife and the mother and the, right, l- l- being in there and in the fight, uh, mm-hmm. and, and Claire McCaskill. I don't, mm-hmm. there, if, you're, if you're praising the feminism of one, right, to be fair. Well, I didn't attack Claire, hold on a second now, yeah. McGraw. I didn't attack Claire McCaskill. You have to understand, I was attacking the pink hat protesters. No, no, no. Were largely I, her base. So I'm, I, well, I, I wasn't attacking Claire McCaskill at all in that statement. Well, you understand. Right. Okay. Back to this here for, for a second. Um, you, but, but, <laughs> but you, you, women are under, um, would you agree that women are under attack these days? Whether it's from a boss who is, um, you know, leaning on them for all sorts of uh, sexual discrimination, uh, lesser pay, um, right? Sort of. Uh, well, violated. none of that is legal. So if they're under attack, they absolutely should. And uh, actually, you know what? That's a very good point. Uh, just this last week, we had uh, a situation where this gym coach, right? He was doing all horrible things to these these uh, young ladies who he was coaching in gymnastics. And the school, you know, they, they reported it to the school, and the school did nothing. And uh, ultimately, now he's being convicted. But, you know, this school should be accountable. They should be held accountable. I think this is horrible. I think that if that's what you're saying, if women are under attack like that, absolutely uh, go after them. Got it. Uh, I, well, we, we both agree, and we can both criticize Michigan State for taking too long in the NCAA, for taking too long. And, uh, well, it's disgusting. I mean, what you expect when you send your kids off to school that they're going to be – the last thing you – I mean, the, the last thing you think they would be in danger of is the school itself, right? No, I agree. I agree totally. Let me ask you this question, Corlin Sykes. The woman who is the CEO of the company – the woman who is, um, you know, wants to be the lawyer, wants to be the breadwinner, uh, the father, the husband, staying home, being the Mr. Mom role. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a problem with that sort of Well, I don't have a problem structure? with any, any – look, McGraw, I don't have a problem with anybody living their life any way they want. I'm just saying how I choose to live mine. And I'll say that the best example, one of the best examples of, of leadership I've ever seen is Barbara Stevenson. She was a former ambassador to the U.S. Embassy in Panama. I worked, uh, I worked for her, and it was a great joy to work for her. Um, in fact, you know, I've worked with women in, in military and diplomatic circles my whole life, and I even have mentors, you know, female mentors on a professional level. Um, and, and so if you're asking me if I, if, I, if I think that women should be, to, if women should have a career, that would be the same as asking me if I believe men should have a career. I don't differentiate the two. Cortland Sykes with us. The next time you get into a controversy, say it here on the Big 550 KTS. <laughs> I just want to be clear that this, this, is, this statement is really, and I, I wanted to make it clear, that it is a pushback against radical feminism and who I believe is destroying the fabric of our families here in the Okay, in define radical feminism. Uh, well, I would say this large, it's largely this movement that we've seen. We've seen all these protests, these women protest with their vulgar signs, and I don't want to repeat any of it over the air to all of your listeners. Um, but, I mean, we're talking about incredibly nasty, vulgar women and, uh, who absolutely hate men. These are man-hating, manophobic women. But a lot of these protesting women are upset because they don't feel their voice is being heard. And that okay. they, they've been silenced. They they try and say, okay. uh, I've, I've been abused. Uh, okay. my, my, you know, the, the Harvey Weinstein women. I mean, the list goes on and on of these oh, women. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not talking about the Harvey Weinstein well, women. But, but you're, you're talking about the protests. Hold on, McGraw. Yeah, you said ahead. that these women feel that they haven't been heard 
And so they're being bullied. So they're being incredibly vulgar in public in front of these families, and they're being loud and obnoxious, and they're hating on men in public, and they're being abusive to men because of their feelings, and you're saying that's okay. Well, I don't know if they're being abusive to men. I think maybe some men, some men who are trying to take advantage of them. I don't I don't feel like they're violating I, my you, space. If you've taken a look at these women, I don't think any men are trying to take advantage of them. Well, that, now, that, now that's the, you're pouring gasoline on the fire, Coral, and you don't need to do that. <laughs> but but it's, the, it's the 150 gymnastics women who felt like their voices weren't being heard. Those, yeah, those, are the women, those are the women who are standing up and saying, hey, wait a minute, listen to Great. me. And so th- you might be getting I some of that. I right, no, that. I hear you. I hate the situation for them, but I, I, say, but I think the, the, if there, were, there are no good moments in situations like that. But the best thing that I saw out of that whole uh, situation was when those young ladies were able to stare that man down to his face and tell him exactly what they thought of him. It breaks I, your heart. I thought that that was – there are no good parts uh, to that whole situation. No, you're right. You're but right. if there were any, you're that right. was it. Uh, what's been the reaction since this uh, story broke, Corlin? Oh, you know, people are obviously getting their hands on it and saying that I hate women or that I think they shouldn't be in the workplace. And, uh, you know, this is just typical, you know, liberal nonsense. So, you know, it's hard to be a – a candidate and it's, it's hard to be a republican candidate it's hard to to uphold traditional values because the silent majority really they they believe this way but they don't want to be they don't want to have their their heads torn off by the liberals yeah. and that's exactly what we're seeing so i'm just i'm saying what no other politician is is willing to say and i'm willing to say hey look we need to push back against this incredibly disruptive uh, movement in our society. Uh, Corlin Sykes, m- remember, if you're going to say something controversial, say it on my show, and you're always welcome here. Good luck on the trail. Bro, I appreciate you having me on. Thanks.